he was dictating part of the message versus when she was asking it to complete an action. Thanks, Peggy. Thanks, Scott. By moving these powerful AI models right onto your phone, we're envisioning a paradigm shift. This next generation assistant will let you instantly operate your phone with your voice, multitask across apps, and complete complex actions, all with nearly zero latency. And actions like turning on the flashlight, opening Gmail, or checking your calendar will even work offline. Now, it's a very hard problem we've been solving, and I'm really excited to share the realization of this vision is not far off. In fact, this next generation assistant is coming to the new Pixel phones later this year. Our mission is to make the assistant the best way to get things done. You just saw how we're making it much faster, but it also has to be personal enough to really help you. Now, personalized help is especially important in areas where people's preferences completely differ, like choosing what to listen to, what to do on the weekend, or even what to eat. So let's look at a recipe example. Hey Google, what should I cook for dinner? Here are some recipe picks for you. Now as you can see, the assistant picked recipes tailored to me. For example, it suggested a bourbon chicken recipe because it's helped me with barbecue recipes in the past. And what I really love is that different people get completely different results. We call this feature Picks for You, and it'll be launching on smart displays later this summer, starting with recipes, podcasts, and events. Now, beyond your preferences, becoming more personal means the assistant will better understand the people, places, and events that are important to you. Now, one important person in my life is my mom, who I'm gonna visit right after I.O. So let's say I ask my assistant, how's the traffic to mom's house? Now we all understand what I mean by mom's house, right? Well, if I'm in Toledo, mom's house might have meant this place, a nonprofit childcare center. In other cities, mom's house can be a restaurant or a grocery store. In fact, there's lots of things in the world called mom's house. <laughs> Now in linguistics, the process of figuring out which thing a phrase refers to is called reference resolution, and it's fundamental to understanding human language. At Google, we approach this problem using our knowledge graph of things in the world and their relationships. It's what allows us to understand something like the Starbucks near the Golden Gate Bridge. Today, we're expanding the assistant's ability to understand you better by applying those same techniques to the things in your world. We call it personal references. So if I shared my mom's contact info with the assistant, I can ask, hey Google, what's the weather like at mom's house this weekend? Friday and Saturday in Carmichael will be partly cloudy. How long will it take to get there? With light traffic, it will take you two hours and 14 minutes to get to 123 Main Street by car. Remind me to order flowers a week before mom's birthday. All right, I'll remind you on July 3rd. And it goes beyond mom. If you've shared important people, places, and events with the assistant, you'll be able to ask for things more naturally, like show me photos of my son, or directions to the restaurant reservation, or remind me to pick up chocolates on my anniversary. And rest assured, you're always in control. You can edit or delete this information at any time in the updated You tab in Assistant Settings. Now one place where the assistant can be especially helpful is in the car offering a safer, hands-free way to get everything you need while you're on the road. Now we've been focused on the main things that we all want when we're driving, to get where we're going safely, to catch up with friends, and listen to something interesting along the way. Last year we brought the assistant to Android Auto, and earlier this year we added it to navigation in Google Maps. I'm happy to share the assistant is also coming to Waze in the next few weeks. Now I'd like to show you the future of how we're improving your mobile driving experience even more, introducing the assistant's new driving mode. Just put your phone in the car and say, hey Google, let's drive. Driving mode has a thoughtfully designed dashboard that brings your most relevant activities front and center while you're driving, and includes suggestions personalized for you. For example, if you have a dinner reservation on your calendar, you'll see a convenient shortcut to navigate to the restaurant. 
Or if you started a podcast at home in the morning, once you get in your car, it'll display a shortcut to resume the episode right where you left off. Now it also highlights top contacts, making it easy to call them or message them, and recommendations for other things to listen to. Now once you're navigating, phone calls and music appear in a low profile way, so you can get things done without leaving your navigation screen. Hey Google, play some jazz. Sure, check out this jazz music station on YouTube Music. Now everything is voice enabled, so if a call comes in, the assistant will tell you who's calling and ask if you want to answer without having to take your eyes off the road. Call from mom. Do you want to pick it up? No thanks. <laughs> well, thanks for your help with the demo, mom. All right, so best of all, with the assistant already on your phone, there's no around the world with all kinds of tasks, whether they are at home or on the go. But we want to build an even more helpful assistant. In order to process speech today, we rely on complex algorithms. It includes multiple machine learning models. One model maps incoming sound bytes into phonetic units. Another one takes and assembles these phonetic units into words. And then a third model predicts the likelihood of these words in a sequence. They are so complex that they require 100 gigabytes of storage and a network connection. Bringing these models to your phone, think of it as putting the power of a Google data center in your pocket. It's an incredibly challenging computer science problem. I'm excited to share we have reached a significant milestone. Further advances in deep learning have allowed us to combine and shrink the 100 gigabyte models down to half a gigabyte, small enough to bring it onto mobile devices. This eliminates network latency and makes the assistant so much faster, so fast that tapping to use your phone would seem slow. I think this is going to transform the future of the assistant, and I'm thrilled to bring Scott to tell you more about our next generation assistant. Thanks, Sundar. Well, what if we could bring the AI that powers the assistant right onto your phone? What if the assistant was so fast at processing your voice that tapping to operate your phone would almost seem slow? It opens up many new use cases, and we want to show you how fast it is. Now, internally, we've been calling this the next generation assistant. Running on device, it can process and understand requests in real time and deliver the answers up to 10 times faster. Now, Maggie's here, and she's going to help us test it out starting with some back-to-back -back commands to demonstrate its speed. Now this demo is hot off the press, so please send your positive energy over in Meggie's direction. Hey Google, open calendar, open calculator, open photos, set a timer for 10 minutes. What's the weather today? What about tomorrow? Show me John Legend on Twitter. Get a lift ride to my hotel. Turn the flashlight on. Turn it off. Take a selfie. Now, as you can see, Maggie was able to open and navigate apps instantly. Now, you might have also noticed that with continued conversation, she was able to make several requests in a row without having to say, hey, Google, each time. Now, beyond an effortless way to operate your phone, you can start to imagine how the assistant fused into the device could orchestrate tasks across apps. Let's look at another demo where Meggie's chatting with a friend. He's going to ask her about a recent trip. Notice how easy it is for her to respond with her voice and even share a photo.
Reply, had a great time with my family and it was so beautiful. Show me my photos from Yellowstone. The ones with animals. Send it to Justin. All right. Wow. Another example is when a friend asks you a question and you need to look up the information to respond. Justin wanted to know when Maggie's flight arrives. When's my flight? When's my flight? Reply, I should get in around 1 p.m. Right, so notice how it helped Maggie multitask more easily across different apps, saving her a lot of back and forth. Now you can even imagine this next generation assistant handling more complex speech scenarios, like composing and sending an email. Hey Google, send an email to Jessica. Hi Jessica. I just got back from Yellowstone and completely fell in love with it. Set subject to Yellowstone Adventures. Let me know if next weekend works for dinner so I can tell you all about it. Send it. Now, as you can see, this required the assistant to understand when they no need to download an app. Just start driving. Driving mode will be available this summer on any Android phone with the assistant. Now, today the Google Assistant is available on over 1 billion devices in over 30 languages across 80 countries. And with Duplex on the web, the next generation assistant personalized help and assistance in the car, we're continuing to build on our mission to be the fastest, most personal way to help you get things done. Now before I go, I wanna share a little something that a lot of you have been asking for. Check this out. Stop. <laughs> your timers and alarms just by saying stop. No hate will need it. And it's rolling out on smart displays and Google Homes in English-speaking locales starting today. Thanks very much.